And then... Oh, that's very cool. It's like bridge. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my case today is a due process case. It's simply that um, I filed a, mili a, a malicious prosecution action against mm -hmm. Nissan North America. I had a lawyer file, file it. He filed the action and then he did not do anything after that action. Um, if you look on the technical records, which I don't have a copy of, um, long complicated story, but unfortunately I couldn't refer reference some things in my brief because of a computer situation. But I was able to say that my lawyer, after he filed the suit, never responded to any of the filings of the um, of, of Nissan. And what happened was, is I tried to, I sent him a certified letter saying, what the heck are you doing? Actually, in my head I was using a bad word, but I actually have a, the document that showed that I sent um, my lawyer a, a basically wanting him to respond to Baker Donaldson. Because, um, and I wanted to get this affidavit that I heard that the assistant district attorney had done, and that was the affidavit that was used in the summary judgment. I wish you had a copy of that summary judgment, but Nissan has decided not to provide that transcript. I asked for that transcript to be provided. They had somebody there for the summary judgment motion. Um, I was actually not allowed to file anything until my loyal lawyer officially withdrew. He did not officially withdraw until January. I discovered a conflict of interest with him. I was asked to go to an American Bar Association National Security Law Program for two days at the Ritz-Carlton to be with CIA, DIA, and NSA lawyers. And at that, I learned there was a conflict of interest with my lawyer, the, the lawyer that wasn't doing anything. And I was, and this was oddly, I had to have him for my previous case that, that stemmed this action. And um, I can probably argue a good case that there's a lawyer shortage in America because I've tried desperately in Tennessee to get a lawyer ever since all this has started to happen to me. I've even reached out to Access for Justice, I've reached out to the United Nations, I've joined uh, Republican uh, lawyer coalitions, um, and nobody really wanted to help me. And I actually, uh, with the Whistleblower Association, they gave me lots of referrals, but they couldn't get me a lawyer. And it was because my case, they said, was too political, people were scared, too many conflicts of interest, and I've been forced to learn how to become a lawyer. And it's not an easy job. And I've been watching the discussion here, and I was thinking when this is over, I'll go to law school, but now I'm getting a little concerned about that option. It's, uh, uh, I would encourage you to think long and hard before you decide to do it. I will. I think, I think I'm a better researcher than lawyer, because my, my rhetoric is pretty tame. And, and I did file a motion um, to reject the motion of summary judgment on the 18th of January. I would have filed it earlier, but I couldn't because my lawyer had to officially and the judge had to sign off on it. So I did make every attempt to, and then the motion was not heard. I actually, at that point, um, a friend of mine gave me some advice. He said, put everything out there, the kitchen sink, and all these motions, because you need something to do an appeal on, because they're going to rush this through. And you know what? He was right. They rushed it through. They basically said, you have no rights in this lawsuit. You I wanted discovery. I wanted to get some depositions. I wanted to find out why the ADA made some false facts that I had proven. I had proven that the ADA Terry Wood made false facts on his affidavit. I had um, proven that things that I was not guilty about, they mentioned over and over again, and it was strictly to discredit me for what I had done, which was I whistleblew about fraud and discrimination, and I was bringing out issues. I was actually a credible researcher, and I've actually got court documents that show that Nissan does know that I come from a government family. My grandfather was a DOD lawyer. He was naval intelligence, went to um, Korea in the 1940s. Um, he, it's kind of embarrassing, he, wor he worked with um, Kissinger's people. Um, Mr. McCone belonged to his country club. He did work for Kennedy's CIA. Um, my grandfather was triple dipper because he had three retirements and I don't really know what he did most of the time. And he belonged to the same country club that my mom belongs to today because you always talk about who your daddy is in Tennessee. Well, 
I really don't know who my biological daddy is, but my, my real daddy was a pilot for World Airways, and he was involved, unfortunately, they did the drug trafficking in Laos and, and all the Vietnam era. And I know that my family scares people because they were involved with the high, a high level group of covert people, but I'm just a kid and I didn't know what was going on. I think most people's families scare them. But... Really? I bet they cook better than my mom. <laughs> and, and it's just kind of strange because I kept wanting to know why this was happening. Why was I jailed three times? Then, then the DA said I was only jailed two times in the court transcript. And he says that, and I wanted depositions to find out why he said that. I, my, my ex-lawyer actually told me that um, he could help get me a job. And the whole point of the suit was to get my reputation back because of the fact that people were discrediting me. I had to deal with a lot of bullying and weird things that were happening to me because at Nissan when they took $1.4 billion to build a car and I had heard that they were using outdated technology from the 90s for the Nissan Leaf and one of my clients, Catherine Perez, who was the VP of Purchasing, she was close to Carlos Ghosn, she actually told me that they had a cash flow problem. This was in 2009 in the winter and they needed that money to basically pay their bills. And so then an engineer from Nissan communicated to me that yes, it was technology from the California Air Resource Board days. And they were building a car that was going to fail. They knew that the range wasn't going to get 100 miles per charge. They knew that when they talked to Congress. They knew when they took this money, they couldn't pay it back. And the collateral is not backed by Nissan. It's a Rutherford County IDB bond. The collateral for the, and it's a $2 billion bond. Then I was communicated that if this bond is exercised, then, then taxes would go up, but it would never be exercised. It was bad collateral. So people were communicating with me a real problem. And the more the problem was communicated and the more I blogged about it, see my First Amendment, that's the one right I'm really grateful about the Constitution, the more my case kind of dragged on and the discrediting in me happened. And I mean, I was accused of stalking a corporation. Well, you can't stalk a corporation. A corporation, you can stalk an individual. But Nissan actually hired a lawyer, Joe Ba, to represent Nissan as the victim of stalking. And I didn't stalk anybody. But then I've got people from my past thinking I'm a stalker. So, and I didn't tell the man I was married to that I did CIA work. I did not tell him I did research. My uncle was chief pilot for Pan Am. When the Lockerbie bombing happened, I actually went to the Middle East in 92 between the cleanup between, and this is all declassified. It's declassified by the DIA. It's actually okay. It, it, the DIA, not the CIA, they did a report. My grandfather was Department of Defense. McNamara, all the fun guys that like to go to Vietnam. Okay, that's my grandpa. He was a big hawk. So, at the end of the day, I got to go in 1992. They, they called it the cleanup. They had to do some housekeeping between the administration. They didn't want people talking between the Clinton and the, between the Bush administration and the Clinton. So I was in Kuwait. I was in Bahrain. This is 92. I have. And you could not go there unless you had the authorization. Unfortunately, it's more complicated. I'll do it in my rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, Your Honors. Good morning. Bridget Carpenter. I'm here on behalf of the defendant, Appley Nissan North America, Inc. And respectfully,